Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Usually when I start these videos I come at you a little bit more refreshed but I have had the worst night's sleep. Our hotel is right off the highway so it was really really noisy and the beds were not particularly comfortable and you're probably wondering why I'm talking about hotel rooms and beds and that's because my mom and I are on another trip. So we fairly recently went up to New Hampshire but she's recently gotten back into quilting. We don't have a lot of good quilt stores on Long Island and it's not nearly as enjoyable to order quilt fabric online. So I've said that we should just go up to Pennsylvania for a day and go to all the quilt shops and then end up turning into a two-day trip. So today it is Friday. We're going to a bunch of quilt stores and fabric stores and then tomorrow we are going to do a bunch of antique stores and then we're going to drive out early Sunday morning and hit up Renninger's Antique Market on the way. So we thought of the idea to go about a week ago and here we are today. We actually ended up driving up last night because it was supposed to rain all of today and rain quite severely. My mom really doesn't like driving up in the rain but it was kind of jokes on her because it ended up raining and it was dark which are the two driving conditions she hates most at the same time. So that was unfortunate but we got in and that meant that we didn't have to wake up super ridiculously early today though we're still very tired given the hotel situation. So I did film a little outfit of the day which I will insert now. So this is my outfit and this is the lighting that I've had to do my makeup in and it has not been fun. I'm wearing a wrap dress from the 1950s that I got from Spirit Vintage. It's really cute. It's got like lace details on the pockets and the top. I've just realized I could kind of use a slip with this and I definitely didn't bring a slip. So that'll be fun. Uh, and then on my feet, I have socks on from Amazon and the Lazy River shoes from a regular choice that match this perfectly. And I'm also bringing backup shoes just in case as well as a sweater and my jacket because it's colder than I'd really expected it to be. And now we are headed to Zooks and that opens at 8 so that's going to be our first stop of the day. It's about 7.45 right now uh, and there's also another quilt store there called Old Country Store which is really nice so we might dip into that as well. And then we're going to Goodville or Zinc's Fabric Outlet. And then we're going to go to One Lone Antique Store. And then we're going to go to Weaver's Dry Goods, which is probably our favorite fabric store in the area. Oh, and we're also going to Fabric Mart. Uh, so usually we come up on a weekend and we have to go to Fabric Mart on our way in. But it's actually kind of close to some of the other stuff we're going to today. So I think we're going to dip in there as well, which is my favorite online fabric store. I don't like their shop as much, but I'm excited to go there. So those are our rough plans for the day. And I will film a little bit inside each store when we get there and I hope you enjoy this video. We're in our first stop of the day which is Zooks and they've got a bunch of clearance fabric at the front and it looks like they've rearranged the store which is exciting so it's a lot brighter looking. I'm probably going to pick up enough of one of these for a historic dress. So yes you're right. Okay I'm going to look on my own now. Is this cute or is it like hotel carpet fabric? That is so cute. Little strawberries. I have these colors, which I have absolutely nothing to do with because they're so, they're just like not colors I normally work with. Ooh, try it with this. <gasps> Those are so See, pretty together. Nice. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. You need to buy these. No, they're too hard to work with this quilting. So I should make a dress out of them. Yeah, then that would. Be. That's easier. Oh, this would go with the navy boat that I bought last time that I originally bought black fabric to go with. I bought like 15 yards of fabric for that project and none of them will work. This is the first store. This isn't supposed to happen. But Moda comes in here and just like takes over my heart. I love these bee prints. They're a lot more minimal than the ones I see in the past. This is the one that I usually see. And I just think they're super pretty and kind of elegant and that it would be beautiful. So you could do it with the honeycombs over there too. Yeah. I'm gonna have to come back for those. I really like those. So I have no idea what I'd do with this, but I really, really like it. I think it's adorable. You guys know how much I love pink. And then over here, they have this one, which I think is 30% off, which would be cool for an 1850s dress if there's enough of it there. So I think I'm gonna have to get both of those. I'm going with these two. 
So we just got out of Zooks and that was very successful. I really enjoyed that store and I like how they've relayed stuff out. They used to have higher shelves and it was just a little bit darker and less pleasant, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I always enjoy it. It was just nicer today. So I ended up getting like 12 yards of a teal and ivory cotton that I'm going to use for a 1850s dress. One of those dresses with the three giant tiers of ruffles. So I'm probably gonna have to reinforce them with horsehair and then bind the edges by hand, but I think that's gonna be really nice. I've wanted to make a dress like that for a while. I just haven't found a fabric for it. And that fabric was beautiful. It was interesting and it was 40% off, which I appreciate when I am buying over 12 yards of it. And then I also got an ivory fabric that matches that. And I purchased the two B fabrics that I showed. So I'm going to make a 1940s blouse and shorts out of that. And I think that will be adorable and actually relatively versatile pieces because they have the black and the pink and the yellow tones in them, which are already very existing in my wardrobe. And then I got some of the blue and white fabric to go with the ship that I purchased last time we were here. So maybe that project will finally happen. And Joann's actually carries a striped white and navy fabric that I'm going to use for the dress. So I just got six yards, which will be enough for an underskirt. And then the last fabric I purchased was a vibrant pink fabric, which I think I showed in the footage that I just fell in love with. And it was $8 a yard, if I recall correctly. So I purchased enough of that to do a late 1700s, kind of early Regency style cotton dress. So I think that's going to be obnoxious, but obnoxiously wonderful. So that's my haul from the first store. And now we are going into Old Country Store. You can kind of see it from here. Maybe? No, it's focusing on all the rain on the window. Uh, I haven't been filming a lot, and that's partially because of the rain, but hopefully I'll get a little bit more footage in here, though it definitely depends on how crowded it is since it's a very small store. It's a very pretty store, too. I freaking love these clocks. I really want the pink one. It would go so nicely in my sewing room. They have lots of cute kind of home goods in here in the front. Aww, that's really cute, too. It's a little ruler. That'd be good for my purse. Maybe I should have brought my swatches. <laughs> this is all K facet. You guys must know how much I love K-Facet. Not as much as I love Tula, but it's very close. Lemurs on a purple backdrop. Um, thank you. I would like that. I'm definitely getting this one. This store is gorgeous. I'm kind of on the lookout for the Michael Miller prints that I didn't buy. I love the sea turtle. Would I wear something made of sea turtle fabric? Probably not. Do I want the sea turtle fabric? Probably yes. They're so cute. So we just got out of that store and that was lovely. I ended up getting four yards of a tulip pink print. I also picked up one and a half yards of a really cute Dumbo fabric that I'm gonna use for a simplicity pattern. I think it would pair really well with red buttons and a red skirt or a red pair of shorts. Then the final fabric I purchased was from an Australian brand that I'd never heard of or an Australian designer at least. And it has kookaburras on it and a really cool dot pattern. So I really like that and I'm really happy with my purchases so far. And now we are heading off to Zinc's slash Goodville Fabric Outlet. Fisher pants. Ah, oh, yes, the special Fisher pants. And if you've seen any of my other vlogs, you'll recognize this, but this is Zinc's Fabric Outlet. The most delightful of places. And it's in a very pretty place, too. This is the homespun room. And unfortunately, I'm not seeing anything that matches the one I have, which is the purple one. But these are really cool. They're very thick, like textured fabrics. I really like these ones too. They don't really go with any of my swatches though. Maybe that one. $5.99. That's a good price. These are really cute. I don't think I'd wear something like that, but it's adorable. And I actually really like these filigree ones as well. That was these ribbons are 50 cents per spool 
and it's all simplicity ribbon so it's like a good brand ribbon I'm gonna come back for that too I love this and I really like this one too all wool blends I still haven't used any of the ginghams I bought last time I was here, so I don't think I can justify more of them. But oh boy, do I want more of them. They're so pretty. So I didn't film a whole lot in there since it was pretty busy, and the wind is probably going to butcher the sound quality of this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert some footage of everything I got after I got home. I got so the first fabric that I gravitated towards was this wool blend, and I purchased six and a half yards of this. And it is a beautiful wool. It's got a good amount of texture to it, but it's also relatively thin, so I think this would make a beautiful suit. In a similar color palette, I also purchased this striped bunny printed quilting cotton. For a while now, I wanted to make a striped 1950s dress with the stripes meeting in a point at the center front of the bodice. I also wanted to have dolman sleeves that are about elbow length and that's when the sleeve is incorporated in the bodice pattern instead of being stitched on separately. Now this isn't a traditional striped print but it actually has mountain designs running vertically across the fabric which bunnies are jumping over and trees are planted in and owls are perched on as well as stars and filigree work throughout it and that creates a striped pattern through the fabric. I thought this would be a really neat twist on the design that I had already in mind. Next up are two fabrics my mom found and the first one is this really cartoonish giraffe print and I saw this and thought it was adorable. I really liked the color and I really liked the simplicity of the print and the matching quilting cotton was just adorable. I love this bright shade of pink uh, and they look so nice together. So I decided to get one and a half yards of the giraffe print for a simple bodice. I'm going to turn it, this into a more versatile, less ridiculous pleated skirt. So that's a little set that you'll probably see in a vlog at some point when the weather gets a little bit warmer. Now these next two fabrics were purchased to match a swatch that I brought with me. Specifically a swatch of this homespun that I purchased from Keepsake Quilting in New Hampshire. But I wanted to find some sort of coordinating fabric that I could use for trimming on this and details and potentially an underskirt if this doesn't end up being enough. So I found this fabric which I thought matched the kind of grayish stripes in this really nicely. And then I purchased five yards of this which I think is going to be for the underskirt and potentially trimming. And this really ties in both the darker and the lighter tones of this fabric and I think they look lovely together. And my final purchases were also to match an existing fabric in my collection. And you might recognize this from a previous Pennsylvania haul. So I have seven or eight yards of that, but I wanted to get some coordinating fabrics, again, that I could use for trims or an apron or just something to make this a little bit jazzier. This project isn't going to be especially historically accurate, so I'm fine mixing it up with some interesting prints. Though these are still historic prints. And I think they match the main fabric really nicely, and they also tie in the darker tones of the ship. And now I'm really, really looking forward to getting started on this project. And that's all I ended up purchasing on this trip to Sinks, aside from a few spools of ribbon, which I didn't bother including since they're not very exciting. We are now just about to head into Mill Property Antiques, which I'm really excited about. I have fond memories of this story. Store. Oh, I just got out of Fabric Mart and I don't think I feel much in the antique store, if anything. My shoulder was kind of bothering me, so I just put the camera away and enjoyed browsing. And then we drove over to Fabric Mart and this is my haul from there. Again, I didn't film anything in there because I get self conscious and there are a lot of employees there and not a lot of people actually shopping there. But I got this fabric, which I've been eyeing up online. It's a metallic silk chiffon and it's beautiful. So I picked up some denim for some summer shorts. I found this polyester chiffon that has satin face stripes. On. I love the rich color of this. I thought it'd be really cool for some sort of Regency costume and you could play around with the stripes and the opacity of them. And then I got some shirtings which I'm considering pairing with a fabric I got for a skirt when I was in New York City. So I think this is the candidate I like the most but they were $3 a yard so I decided to pick up two and a half yards of both. And then this is just a chemise fabric for the pirate costume I want to make that I picked up some quilting cotton for this morning. And lastly, I got some pink mesh, this non-stretch um, mesh, and I'm going to use this for a pair of Anastasia pajamas. So that is my haul. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I do wish silks in general had been on sale, but they didn't have a whole lot of selection of silks. So I don't know that I necessarily would have bought more if they had. And now we are heading off to Black Swan Antiques because we ended up having a lot of extra time, a lot more extra time than we'd expected. So that should be fun to look around in. So it's about an hour away, so I'm going to try and do a little bit of editing while we're in the car, and then I will show you around when we get there. Dachshund watch. I don't see one. That's why it's called Dachshund watch, not Dachshund. Uh-oh. Actually, I think you have that one. My mom collects the, what brand? Beswick. Siamese cats. I love these little shoe pin cushions. Classy. They still have that beautiful sewing kit, Victorian sewing kit. 
which is still too expensive for me. I have one of these at home, a Geneva crimper from the late 1800s. It's another one of those little stoves. Looks like artwork I did when I was really young and didn't understand proportions. Look at how big its head is. Button garlands. That's what I should do out of all of mine. God knows I have enough for it. Ah, the classics. Salt, pepper, and mustard. Ooh, curling tongs. I bought a pair like those. I'm going to do a video on it someday. Let's see if they'll have another one of those lady head vases I've never seen anywhere else. There's lady men in here. Or men. Lady men? Lady men vases. Men vases. Ooh, they have Florence's. Can you see it? They have two Elaine's. And I don't really care for Elaine. Don't worry. We found Cabinet Heaven. So this is an old nut and bolt cabinet. It's called a rotisserie cabinet. And then over here, they have spool cabinets, which are also lovely. So this like goes up and then you can see all the spools. It's really pretty. But I already have a spool cabinet at home and I don't need to spend that much money on anything, much less another one. Though I could get this cabinet. My figurines would look great in there. Though I don't know they'd all fit. <laughs> Those are some very cool, very large hat pins. I also really like the Lefton bunnies. I love bunnies in general, but I don't have room to collect them. <laughs> this is so my aesthetic. So we were in there for about an hour and 20 minutes and it was a good time, but it's funny, when we first started going, that store felt absolutely massive. It felt like the end all be all of the antique stores. And after going to places like Mad Hatter and stuff last year, it feels a lot smaller. Though it's still really nice and has a really like eclectic and good variety of things. It's just really fun to walk through. So I enjoy that store a lot. I ended up spending $40. I got this pink hat, which is such a Mrs. Maisel hat. I love it, and it's a really good size. Though a lot of hats fit me. Some of them I have to kind of cram my head into, whereas this one just fits perfectly. Uh, so I really, really like that, and I think the brooch on it's quite cute. And then I bought a brooch uh, for a Victorian costume. It's not a Victorian brooch, I can tell by the clasp. A lot of you guys told me how to identify the age of brooches uh, based off their clasp. So that was neat. Um, and that was $8. And then I got these really cute little bee brooches, and there's a pair of them. And I thought I might be able to incorporate these into uh, the project with the bee fabric that I purchased earlier. And then I just got a cheap double strand pearl choker, which I'm going to alter for Anastasia. And then the last things I bought were just buttons. It was $4 for a bag of buttons, so I got two bags. Uh, and it looks like there are a couple of cards with the same buttons in there. No, I didn't look through all of them, so there are going to be some mystery buttons there too. So that's my haul, and now we're going to Weaver's Dry Goods, which is my favorite, I think, of the quilt stores. Definitely one of my favorites of the quilt stores, so I'm eager to go there. Hopefully I won't spend too much more money on fabric, but you never know. We've arrived at Weaver's. You can't really see it through all of the raindrops because it is raining quite a lot. Uh, I was feeling really nauseous on the drive over, but I'm excited now that we're here. Uh, and I've drank some water and taken some Tylenol, so hopefully I will feel a lot better in the very near future. <laughs> there are a lot of people in the front area, so I didn't film there, but the prince room is empty, and the prince room is the best room. Last time there were these prints. Yes, they still have them. They totally forgot to buy, and I was editing the footage later, and I was really sad that I didn't get them, so this time I need to remember them. Though it doesn't look like they have enough for what I would usually make with them, which is kind of a bummer. This is the main room. It's all boutiques. And there's a downstairs too, which is where I'm headed. This is the downstairs. And all the fabric down here is less than $7 a yard. And then I have my swatch cards. I'd love to find something that would go well with I'm trying to match this. So we just got out of Weaver's and this is my haul. I purchased two K facet prints. They were just pulling these out. Like they hadn't even put prices on them yet. So I got four shards of this seashell one with a blue base, which I think is just gorgeous and perfect for a summery dress. 
or at least a me style summer dress. And then I got this larger, maybe chrysanthemum or peony print. And then it's got this black and white print in the back. And this actually looked very vintage to me. This reminded me of old 1950s dresses. So I thought I could pair it with this black for a sash around the waist and end up with something really nice. And then I got various buttons because they actually had surprisingly good deals on buttons. So these were like a dollar each and I just thought they were really cool. And then I got these metallic fish buttons to go with this fabric which I think is from the same collection as the Kookaburra fabric I purchased earlier today. But it's almost done a constellation style. It's on a really dark background, but it's all sea creatures. So I just really like this fabric, and I regretted not getting it last time, so I was happy to see that they still had some left. And I got the last cut on the bolt of four yards. In fact, I think I got four yards of everything, except for this, which I just got one yard of. So that is my haul, and now we are going back to our hotel, or Walmart, or both at some point. There's probably going to be food involved in there somewhere. Uh, but I don't think that'll be very interesting, so I probably won't film much of it, if any of it. So, it is currently 8.10. I had quite the adventure tonight. We ended up getting food at Five Guys, and then we went to Walmart, and then we went to Kohl's. We were in search of cold weather clothing, because we didn't pack any. And our hotel room is freezing, and then I did some packing of the car, so now there's some stuff underneath it. Hopefully we will have room for as much fabric and antiques as we wish to purchase. My mom currently has a pile of fabric, as well as bags, and she's gonna cut swatches of all of these tonight so she can find things that match them. So my mom and I are about to head out, so I just wanted to film my outfit of the day. I pulled my hair partially up because it wasn't looking so great. I didn't make any effort to conserve the style last night. Then I'm wearing a 1960s blouse, just a ship and shore blouse. I love the collar on it and the length of the sleeves. And then I'm wearing a romper that I got from Mod Cloth a while ago. I don't know that it's the best choice for travel because it's very difficult to get on and off whenever I have to use the bathroom. And I'm trying to drink a lot of water because, as you might be able to tell by my voice, I'm very dehydrated. But it is what it is. And then for shoes, I've got on more of my roughly Amazon socks. And I'm going to wear these ones from Bait. I think they're called the All-Stars. And they're super cute. I definitely need to have flats on because we're doing hardcore antiquing today. And by hardcore antiquing, I mean we're doing the circuit that I think a lot of old people come up to Denver, Pennsylvania to do. But it's going to be a lot of fun. So we've just made it to Goodville slash Sinks, and we are going back here today because my mom has a few more quilt fabrics she wants to get, and then we'll be going to Burke Holders after this. And then, for the rest of the trip, it's all antiques, uh, so that should be a lot of fun. But the fabric stores are fun, too. I definitely spent my fabric budget yesterday, but I have this fabric, which I wouldn't mind finding a matching binding for, that's that dark teal color, because I don't think I'll have enough of this fabric, even though I bought 12 yards of it. And I'd really like to find a 30s print that would go well with this. And when I say 30s prints, I actually mean 1830s prints, uh, just something floral, uh, preferably in the $5.99 range as well. I saw a bunch of motor prints at Weaver's Dry Goods that would have been perfect, but they were all a little bit more expensive and a little bit more than I wanted to pay. So that's what I'm looking for. I've also switched over to a smaller wallet. So as much as I love this purse, I don't have to carry it around everywhere because between the strap from that and the strap from the camera, my neck was killing me last night. So I'm hoping I can get away with just having stuff in my pockets. And that is the plan. So these are going in a pocket and we are going in there. This actually matches the fabric I have in the car. I'd love to find this in red. They might have it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I was going to go for something more understated, but I think that prints are really cool. I think that one looks better with the fabric though, but it's boring. But I don't want to buy both of them. That is a bang on match. So I'm going to get some of that as well. And I think this one's going to go back even though I love it deeply. This just matches the fabric better. And I do want to use them together. I'm heading back to the car for another swatch. Success. This is the one I'd love to find a match for as well. It's weird though. It's gray, but it's a very bluish, almost seafoam gray. So we'll see if they have anything. Okay, that is a good match. it's too green and that matches the fabric really well I'd rather emphasize the blue tones so there's this and this I don't know which I like better I like them for different reasons 
So I ended up buying both grey quilting cots that I really liked. I just couldn't decide between them. I liked them both for different reasons, uh, so I wanted to give myself options when it came to actually designing the dress to have multiple fabrics to pick from. I think worst case I could actually use this for an 1840s dress with a pointed front and match it with a green uh, silk fabric that I have that I purchased from a cause project and didn't end up using. And then I also got some fabric to match a material that I purchased yesterday. I don't know where this watch went, but I'm going to use this for binding around the ruffles of an 1860s skirt. Then lastly, I bought the brown fabric that I thought worked really nicely, with the reddish and ivory homespun that I had. So that is my haul, and I really don't envision myself getting anything from Burke Holders because Burke Holders is really expensive, but I'm sure I'll pick up things at antique stores throughout the day. So unfortunately, it is too windy to do a panning shot out there and also talk at the same time, but we've made it to Burke Holders. So we're going to go in there. These are all florals. I like the stripes. It reminds me of Blue's Clues. I got some of the fabric from this collection last year. I was really hoping they would have the Michael Miller prints with the sharks on them. But I think it's too new of a collection. So I might have to order that online if I end up deciding to get it. These look almost like K-Facet prints. They're not, but they're really pretty. Novelty prints, my favorite. <laughs> like cats in space. So much fruit and food. This entire aisle is food. I still like the bumblebees I bought better. This is cute with the zippers. And of course I love the shoes because I just love shoes in general. These are those beautiful Moda flannels, or wools, I mean, they're all wools. And as you can see, they're between $20 and $37 a yard. So I got, I think it was this color, and I got eight yards of it, and it was $12.99 a yard, which is such a good deal. Still a lot of money to spend, but it is much better than spending that quantity. I love these. Again, they kind of remind me of Tula Pink prints, but they don't have, you know, weird animals hidden in them. They're still just really, really pretty. I really like these dusty kind of coral colors. I think they're really pretty. I'm in the back room now, which is where there are 30s prints and there are also all of the sale fabrics, which I'm going to be looking at first because I've spent a lot of money on fabric so far on this trip. Did find you the pink. Now, is this their 30s collection? Yes, it is. Isn't it grand? It is lovely. You could do the bunny quilt out of fabric that has bunnies on it. That would be kind of adorable. It would be amazing. This is the line that I bought a couple fabrics from on this trip. But they don't have the kookaburra one, so I'm glad that I got that where I did. And I don't think they have the navy in this, which is what I bought. At least I think that's what I bought. That was yesterday. That was a long time ago. Those are cute. I love this color palette over here. Like these. It's just oh, really God. different. So we have officially left Burke Holders, and that was pretty productive for my mom. She managed to get, I think, everything on her list, or at least most of the things on her list. And I, for once, and probably the only time on this trip, didn't get anything. We were going to an antique store, my favorite antique store, called Mad Hatter Antiques. And despite the name, it doesn't have that many hats. However, it does have some hats, which means I'm probably going to buy a hat. In fact, my mom and I were taking bets on how many hats I'm going to end up with after this store and after the trip in general. So far I'm up to two, which I think is a record low for day two of a antique adventure. But we've only been to three antique stores, so I'm not doing that well. But I'm really, really excited. I love this antique store and I love this area for antiques. So I think it's going to be a really fun, albeit quite busy day. This is a ridiculous hat and it's by Lane Bryant. I don't know if that's the one that's still around today, but I thought that was funny. They have some great purses here. It's like a lamp that has earrings. How about the sewing machine? The decals are in really good shape on that one. Okay, this says it's a trowel, but it looks like a little cake scooper for an American Girl doll. And I no longer have an American Girl doll, but I still kind of want it because it's so cute. I really want to start collecting bunnies. This could be the beginning. Get two and have them Did you see the little turtles? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
last time I was here I mentioned it was like walking back into the 60s and also that they had a whole bunch of vintage trash cans and like 80 people pointed out that those are hampers but I promise you last time I was here they had an entire shelf full of trash cans too it just wasn't in frame when I was mentioning them see vintage trash cans I wasn't making it up these are all tablecloths and homeware Despite this being my favorite store, I really did not film very much in here. However, I can show you what I purchased. So I bought two belts and a girdle, but I don't have footage of the girdle because I'm quite self-conscious. But the belts are really neat. So the first one is made out of a gold glittery vinyl with a gold buckle and gold star studs and gold cording on all of the edges. It almost has a military look to it, but with a clearly feminine sparkly twist that I absolutely adore. And this belt was $12, but it was 20% off. And I also purchased an alligator leather belt, which is a little bit wider and and also in perfect condition. This is a really neat textured buckle and it fits me perfectly. I haven't filmed much in here because it's this one, but it's very nice. I really want the stars. I think they're gorgeous. They're a little bit more than I'd usually pay, but they're stunning. Everything in this case is. A little Florence, that one's Elaine. I still have no idea what this store was called, but it was very busy, so I didn't get much footage. However, I did end up getting a really cute enamel elephant brooch, as well as this darling little strawberry brooch. Lastly, I purchased a choker made out of black beads, and this reminds me a lot of jet beads and jet jewelry from the Edwardian and Civil War era period. I think it would be a perfect accessory for costumes from either of those periods, so for $15, I decided it was worth getting. We're randomly stopping here because we drove past it, so we'll see what it's like. God. Dolls are creepy enough without you making the eyes bright red. They're like vampires. It's motion activated. Your little mm -hmm. shoes. Oh, they are so cute. I love this one. And that one. And that one. Those are really cute. This place is like a maze. Yeah. A cute purse. This footage is all from Lancaster County Antique Market, and the stores were so close together that I didn't have time to film wrap-ups of each one. Wow. From this shop, I ended up getting a modern wool bowler hat in brown that I thought would go really nicely with the brown fabric I got for an Edwardian suit from Zinc's fabric outlet earlier in the trip. This is an extra large, so it should be able to accommodate my head even with a fancy Edwardian hairstyle. We are now at German Trading Post, and it's been pretty busy in all the stores, so I haven't been filming much because it's kind of weird talking to yourself when people are watching you talk yourself. Also, one of the stores we went into, they were talking about how they are using cameras to like scope out where people were and steal things, so that made me feel a little bit less comfortable about bringing it out. But I'm excited to go in here, and all of the stores have been having sales that we've gone into, so that's nice too. Regretted not getting these last time, so this time I am. The frogs shall be mine. Successfully gotten the frogs. So now we are looking at brooches and jewelry in general. Vintage Girl Scout uniforms. I wish they had the rompers in my size because they're super duper cute, but they're also very tiny. <laughs> I should put these on a costume, piss everyone off. I was so happy to see that this store still had the frog buckle that I admired so much on my last trip, and I snatched it up real quick. I don't know what project this is going to be paired with, but I'm really excited to own it. Then I also bought another item I'd seen last time I was there, and this is a rabbit fur jacket in a size medium. I think this is from the 70s, and it's a bomber-style jacket, but obviously made out of fur. There's some damage to this, but nothing that I don't think I can repair, and I thought this was a garment I would get a lot of wear out of. I don't support the modern fur industry, but I do really like fur from an aesthetic standpoint, and I like wearing vintage furs and giving the garments the life that an animal died for. That is a lot of hat pins. Thank you. 
And then there's hats. Yeah, this booth is pretty nice. This is the same lady. We need to look that up. Yeah. I'm stopping to add some context because this footage was filmed in Adam's Antique Annex. But while we were there, we kept seeing booths that had plum pudding antiques, etc. on them. And we really liked all the stock that those booths had. So we decided to look up the actual plum pudding store, which is where we visited next and where this next bit of footage was taken. So that was amazing. We just got out of this little shop and it's a little tiny shop that primarily sells hats and it was fantastic. The woman running it was named Janet and she was so passionate about hats and she knew the history behind each of them and the condition of each of them and she was just so like enthusiastic in a really intelligent way and it was really wonderful to see someone who loves hats more than me because you know I don't come across that very often <laughs> and she had some really really amazing hats with really interesting unique trims they're primarily from the 40s through to the 60s and I got some beautiful hats that I'm really really excited about so that was wonderful uh, and I'm just really like in a smiley mood after that and now we're heading back to Adam's Antique Annex this booth is amazing it's like 1930s they've got a bunch of 1950s stuff over here all of it's too small, I think. They have some really amazing hats from the Victorian era. Regency Spencer. Look at that work. It's gorgeous. Lined with a linen fish feeling fabric. This one's great. So is this one. I'd love to make St. Joe with too rich for my blood, but still lovely. After visiting Plum Pudding Antiques, we went back to Adam's Antiques Annex, and I ended up purchasing a brown 1940s hat with a really cool feather and perfectly intact veil, as well as this darling little acorn brooch they think would look really nice on the striped bunny 1950s dress that I mentioned my plans for earlier in the video. This is our last stop of the day, uh, Pine Hills Antique Mall, which is I think my mom's favorite. and. Isn't my favorite, but they could have Florence ceramic figurines. It's the type of place that has a lot of glassware and stuff. So that'd be nice because I haven't bought any on this trip and that's very sad. Another Florence, though again, not really one that I'm interested in buying. She's cute. They have so much glassware here. It's wild. Seriously, if you want to buy glassware, this is the place to come. Or kitchenware in general, I guess. Sparklies. I like the jack lantern. I do too. 20 vintage patterns for $3.50. So it is the last day of our trip and I'm dressed really casually and comfortably today. I didn't put any makeup on. I'm wearing this adorable swirl dress, which I got from Spearmint Vintage as well. It was like $30 and I love it. It's got these really cool little details around the neckline, this open work, and then that's mimicked around the pockets too. And I specifically chose to wear this because it has pockets because I haven't been carrying my purse. I've just been sticking my wallet in one pocket, my phone in the other. And then I have green socks and my pink regular choice shoes since these ended up being more comfortable than the bait ones. I'm also gonna wear my military jacket. And I actually think the olive tones go relatively nicely with this. I think it's kind of cute as a look, uh, but it's just way too cold for me to not wear a coat. <laughs> So I'm all packed up. That was my bag for the trip. I just have to make sure to remember my blanket and then we'll be off to Renninger's. So we are two minutes away from Renninger's and this is the antique alley basically that we went all the way across yesterday. And then this is Adam's Antique Annex, which we also went to yesterday, several times in fact. And Mad Hatter's up here if you just keep on going. But we are stopping early for Renninger's, which opens at 7.30 and has a big outdoor element you see the purple one? Yeah, the purple one's amazing. It's a original tag on a 1920s gym wow. uniform. How neat is that? It's incredible. Hats. 
I could do uh, I could do 75 on it. If you would like to try it on, you're welcome to take it to the ladies' room, which is right on the other side of this room. I think I'm getting this. I love it. <laughs> it's my hand for scale. They're tiny. And it has on the bag. It's so I didn't end up filming very much at Redinger's just because it was so busy, but I will show you what I purchased. So I ended up buying two dresses from a wonderful vintage clothing seller they have there. And the first one is this white organza dress, which is covered with ruffles, polka dot ruffles to be exact. And I just thought this was darling. I was really excited to see one of these dresses in my size because I've come across them before, but they're usually very tiny. And I just thought it was lovely and so, so sweet. So I ended up buying that and it was $60. And then I also purchased a black dress from the same seller for $50. It's faded to almost a dark gray, and it's a shirtwaist dress from the 1950s, but with a kind of interesting collar and some lace inset work down the front and back. So I just think it's a really interesting take on the classic shirtwaist dress, and it's a color that I wear often, but don't have a ton of in my wardrobe. So I was really, really excited to see this dress and to get it for a good price. It was $50, if I recall correctly. I also purchased nine patterns, the first of which is a Hollywood pattern. This is pattern number 1996, and it is a size 20, intended for a 38-inch bust and a 41-inch hip. So it should fit me with room to spare, which is always nice. This is another Hollywood pattern, and this is based on something Jane Wyatt wore, or her style in general, I guess. This is a really cute 1930s or 40s design uh, that has rick rack around the hem and a fitted waistline with puffed sleeves and gathers at the front. I thought this was really sweet, and this is probably the dress that I'm most excited about making. This is right up my alley in terms of stuff that I would wear. This is a dewberry pattern, and I don't think I've ever followed a dewberry pattern. Again, this is probably from the 1940s and is number 6126. This is in a size 14, so I definitely have to let it out slightly to fit me, but I really, really liked both the pair of shorts and the jacket uh, for this pattern. I can see myself making and wearing both of those pieces. And it looks relatively simple in terms of the pattern design as well, which I appreciate. This is another Hollywood pattern that I thought was really cute. It is made for a 34 inch bust and is pattern number 1686. I love this. Again, it's right up my alley in terms of things I would wear and I like all of the versions of this. It's just a relatively simple puffed sleeve blouse uh, and the pattern looks really easy for that. So I can't wait to make quite a few of these uh, and add them into my summer wardrobe. This is an Ann Adams pattern and I followed one of her patterns quite recently to make a jellyfish printed tulip pink dress. And I think I might use another tulip pink fabric for this one. Maybe one of the unicorn prints she just came out with. I think that would be quite cute. This is a really nice design of wrap dress. It wraps around the front and then it buttons close down the side. I just think the theming of this is really cute and will end up being really flattering. I bought a 1950s Vogue pattern, which I thought was really, really elegant and cute. So I might actually wait until fall or winter for this one because I probably prefer the long sleeve version. An advanced pattern for a summer dress that has really cute tulip style pockets as well as galloping around the neckline. Another Vogue pattern that I'm probably going to save until winter. This one's number 6657. And this has the dolman style sleeves, which I really, really like and want to incorporate in more of my designs. So I could actually use this as a basis for the bunny striped print dress, but I have a feeling I'll end up drafting it myself instead. Regardless, very cute dress and definitely something I will make in the future. Speaking of cute, we have another Hollywood pattern from the 30s or 40s. This one's made for a size 32 bust, so I'm probably gonna have to let it out slightly, but it was just too cute to pass up. I love the pleated details around the skirt. And lastly, a simplicity pattern. I don't usually buy simplicity patterns, but I really liked this with these short raglan sleeves. I thought it'd be really cute and it looks really easy to put together too. So that's something that we will probably see appearing in a future video as well. Also from Renninger's, I purchased some really cute little scatter pins. They had this pair marked as $5, which I was happy to pay. They're little Dalmatians with red rhinestones as eyes. Now this is my last purchase. This was something I had on my eye on last time I was at Renninger's, and I didn't end up purchasing because it was too expensive and the woman running the booth was kind of rude. But this time around, her daughter was running it and she was a lot nicer and more willing to negotiate. So I ended up purchasing this, and it is a necklace and pair of clip-on earrings, which I think is from before the 1950s, but anyone who knows more about jewelry will have to let me know. This is a fruit themed necklace and earring set which is made entirely out of metal and glass. So all of these little beads and leaves are individually made from glass. And I just thought this was really cute and so retro looking. It reminds me a lot of the celluloid or bakelite necklaces from the 30s, though I'm not sure it's that old. I think the glass came later instead of earlier but I don't know for sure. I actually want to make a dress modeled entirely around this because I love it so much. So these are the earrings, and then this is the necklace. And it sits relatively high up on the neck and just looks really feminine and wonderful. But while I'm at it with the questions, this does have some green 
gunk slash tarnish on it. So if anyone has recommendations for getting that off without damaging the coloring of the fruit or the material that was used for the fruit, please let me know because I want to get this cleaned up and I want to start wearing it. I'm not much of a jewelry person, but this is just a really, really special piece and I'm so excited to finally own it. I've been thinking about it ever since we saw it uh, last year. So that is it for the haul and for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was really long. If you enjoyed giving this video a like and a comment really helps me out. And I shall talk to all of you guys very, very soon.